Hello, everyone. Joe Valeria here, partner and wealth advisor with Carson Valeria Wealth Management. And welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about how to invest at any age using buckets. I get this question all the time, talking to clients, talking to people in the general public, answering questions from our podcast, where should I invest my money? But as I'll get into here just a bit, that's not really the right question that we should be asking where we should invest our money. But before that, I want to say this. If you haven't seen our video on building your financial house, how to properly build your financial house, you want to go back and you want to watch that first because that has some key foundational tips that you'd want to make sure that you have in order first before you even think about investing in stocks and bonds. So go watch that video, how to build your financial house. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and jump into what we're going to talk about today, which is really investing at any age using buckets. And I say at any age because people tend to think that there is a huge difference on how you should invest when you're younger, when you're closer to retirement. And maybe there is in a way, but the way we think about how to invest really doesn't have to change. And that is going to be apparent when we go through this bucketing strategy, which I'll explain in just a bit. And it really doesn't have to be overly complicated either. You see, we financial advisors and financial professionals can really overcomplicate things and make them seem very, very complex. But how to invest and understanding how to allocate your money really should be a very simple thing for any investor to understand. And so this strategy, using buckets, really helps simplify things and uh, helps break down what could be really complex or what could seem complex into something that's really simple. So when we're talking about investing, you'll see on the screen here, these are some options on where you can invest your money. You want to invest. Well, what are your options? You first have to kind of understand that. And of course, this is not everything that you could invest your money in. You know, you, you could probably invest your money in art or collectibles and other things like that. But these are these are some common places that you could invest your money. But as I you know, want to make the disclaimer for, I'm only going to talk about you know, registered securities and places you can put your money that that I'm allowed to advise on. So I'm not going to talk about real estate. I'm not going to talk about private business or collectibles or art or anything like that. So we're talking about more traditional financial investments, stocks, bonds, cash alternatives, things like that. That's what we're going to cover in today's video. Now, as we look at all of these things, I'd, I'd like you to think about something for a moment and answer this question. When you look at all of these investments, you know, let's take checking and savings, for example, because you might say, well, there's some good investments on here and some bad investments. So let me ask you, is your checking account and your savings account a good investment? Now, you might have said, no, that's not a good investment, but it's kind of a trick question. It's not that it's a bad investment. Your checking account and your savings account, those are bad long-term investments. They're good short-term investments if you need money for short-term reasons. And most of us, we need money in our checking account because we have bills. We're paying for things every day. So you need money in that checking account. And so what we really want to boil this down to is understanding that different types of investments are created for different reasons. And really every investment is designed either for the short term, the midterm or the long term. And the key for us is to identify which investment goes in which bucket, short term, midterm, long term, and then ask ourselves, when are we going to need the money that we're investing? So that's how we decide how much do I put in stocks? How much do I put in bonds? How much do I put in cash? Don't think of it like that. Think of it like this. How much do I need in the short term? How much do I need in the long term? And then how much do I need in the midterm, in the middle? Now, how do you define short, mid, and long? Well, this is how we've defined those time periods. Short term being zero to two years. Now, some people say, geez, two years, that's that doesn't seem very short to me. Well, in the financial world, that's considered short term. Two to nine years, we define that as the midterm. And then long term, we, we look at 10 years or longer as being long term. And so as you think about investments and the options that you have, you also need to think about 
when am I going to need this money? So as we start with the short-term bucket, we look at cash, CDs, checking, savings, money market funds. Why are those in the short-term bucket? Well, number one, they're very highly reliable investments over that zero to two year period. Now, just like I said, your checking account is not a good long-term investment. We could look at the other side of the coin and say stocks are not good short-term investments. Why? Because they're not reliable in the short term. They're not reliable over a zero to two year period. Yes, many two year periods or even one year periods, you might have seen stocks go up, be positive, have good returns. But when I'm talking to clients, we're trying to get the highest probability that we can of our investments returning a positive rate of return and a good rate of return, the best rate of return that we can compared to all these other types. So when we look at zero to two years, there have been plenty of two year periods where stocks have been negative. In fact, just a few months ago, I sat on a video and, and talked about how the S&P 500 was negative for the last two years. So that's happened plenty of times. Bonds have been negative over a two year period, plenty of times. And so you can put those in the short term bucket, but now you're gambling because the probability that your stocks are going to have that positive return that you're expecting is a lot lower if you only leave your stocks invested for two years. So if I have money I'm going to need in six months, I'm not likely going to go buy Apple stock or Amazon or any stock for that matter. I'm going to go buy the highest yielding CD that I can or a money market, something that I can get to. If I need money in six months, nine months, you know, stocks can go down in that time period. Bonds can go down and we're just gambling if we invest in those things, knowing we're going to need the money in the short term. Then we talk about stocks and we, we say, well, okay, if stocks aren't good over a two year period, how long do you need to give stocks to get the probability good enough that you're going to have a positive rate of return or the rate of return that, that you're expecting? And this is all based on historical returns. We've got a great podcast episode on the Retirement Power Hour about the pitfalls of evaluating rates of return with more stats in that. So you should go and, and I encourage you to go watch or listen to that episode uh, that we just published not too long ago. But when we look at the research, that's how we've defined these time periods long term. So when we look at the research, we've defined long term as 10 plus years because we think that's how long you need to give stocks to give yourself a high enough probability to get the return that you would expect or that you want. Now, the longer you go, the higher the probability and the higher the returns have been historically. The shorter you go, the more variance you're going to see in returns. So if I look at stock returns over a five-year period, I'm going to see a bigger variance. So we think 10 years and we're comfortable with that. So my zero to two year money is going in very, very safe investments. My 10 plus year money, we like stocks for 10 plus years. Well, how do you bridge the gap between two and 10 years? We use bonds. We like bonds because bonds, although again, they've been negative over three years, four years. Uh, it wasn't until 2022 that bonds as a whole were negative over a four year period. We had never seen a four year period where bonds were negative. 2022 happened and now we've seen one, but that's still a pretty high historical probability that if we give bonds three, four, five, six, seven, eight years, there's a pretty high likelihood based on historical performance. We think that we'll see the return that we want. We'll see a positive return. So that's how we think about bucketing. So how does this work if you're near retirement? Well, if you are retired, you've got a million dollars, let's just say you expect to withdraw 25,000 from your portfolio over the next 24 months. Well, that's two and a half percent of your portfolio should be in those investments, cash, money markets, CDs. Then we look at how much are you expected to withdraw over the next, you know, from, from years two to nine, let's just say it's 300,000. That brings you to about 30% of your overall portfolio. So we like to earmark that in that bond bucket. And that leaves 67.5% or so in stocks. So, you know, if this was your situation and, and this was the expected withdrawals that you were going to have, this is how we would build out this bucketing methodology, this exercise for you 
to start to narrow in on how should I be invested. So this may, may look like a typical retiree allocation, pretty common to see 60, 40 or 70, 30 for retirees. Now you can also though apply this bucketing me methodology to younger workers. And you could say, okay, how much am I gonna withdraw from this account? And let's talk about retirement accounts for a young person. Well, nothing in the next zero to two years, nothing in the next 12 months, because if you're younger, you're not retiring for a long time. I'm not withdrawing anything for the next two to nine years either. So I could basically put all of my money in those long-term investments or into stocks. We would be comfortable recommending that. Of course, I'm not giving any individual recommendations here. You should talk to a, an advisor. You can reach out to us, but you need to talk to someone so that they can evaluate your specific situation. And this is just for general information. This is not specific advice for anyone. I do need to say that. So that's how it would work for a younger person. Let's talk about a younger person's bank money, money they have in their checking or their savings account. And maybe they're wanting to buy a house in the next two or three years. Well, they wouldn't want to put that money in stocks. They would want to put that money, depending on if it's going to be a year from now or five years from now, something a little bit more conservative so that, again, they have a high probability of a positive, good return at the time that they need to access that money. So don't forget, ask yourself, when am I going to need the money? And then what can I put my money into that gives me a high probability of a strong return? But your emotions also matter too. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you go through this bucketing exercise and maybe this time horizon bucketing method suggests that you should be 80% stocks, so you're a retiree, but it says because you don't project to need much in the way of withdrawals, that you, you, know, you could be 80-20, but you're more conservative. You don't like the ups and downs. You need to understand that as well. And maybe your emotional risk tolerance is suggesting more like a 60-40. So it's a little bit more of a smooth ride. Well, maybe you merge those together and go somewhere in the middle, 70-30. The whole key here historically is that the higher percentage allocated to stocks, historically, it has generated over long periods of time, it has generated a higher average return. So that's why we would say consider going somewhere in the middle just to try and get as close to that limit as possible in that stock bucket. So that's all I have for today. That is how to invest at any age using buckets. And wasn't it really simple? It's, it's, it doesn't have to be complicated. And a lot of times in your 401ks, these are the investment options you have. You have stocks, you have bonds, you have cash, maybe you have target date funds. You know, and these target date funds, they, they aim to do sort of what we're saying here. But what you can do is create your own financial plan, retirement plan, or have someone do it for you. We do offer a free retirement analysis. Here at our firm, you can go to carsonalaria.com. You can schedule your own introductory phone call. It's completely free, no charge. And we'll talk to you, see if you might be a good fit and if we might be a good fit to help you. And then we'll go through and take you through a retirement analysis and try and project what do you need to take out in the way of withdrawals over the next two years, five years, 10 years, 30 years. And then we'll start to build out that bucketing exercise for you. Well, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. And don't forget, check out the Retirement Power Hour podcast, which is a show that I host to help listeners invest wiser and retire better. We cover lots of different topics and have lots of different interesting guests. You can find it on Spotify, on Apple, and you can watch our videos on YouTube as well. So with that, thank you for watching again. I'm Joe Alaria, Partner and Wealth Advisor with Carson Alaria Wealth Management. Until next time, take care.